Thank you for choosing Doylestown Hospital's Orthopedic Institute for your upcoming surgery. This educational video is for patients receiving total shoulder replacement surgery. Some of you will be going home the same day and some of you will be staying overnight. There are many things that are similar in the process and we will discuss the differences when they occur. We are extremely appreciative of the fact that you have elected to have your joint replaced here at Doylestown Hospital. Please refer to your teaching packet throughout this presentation. We are committed to helping you through this journey. No question is too small. And although we have tried to capture the most common questions, we know you still have some. If you have questions after this presentation, please call the Orthopedic Navigator at 267-893-9388. If you have not read the Total Shoulder Surgery Program Booklet, please stop the video and review the booklet before you start this presentation. At Doylestown Health, we are committed to your care. The Orthopedic Institute participates in the American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons Shoulder and Elbow Registry. We consistently receive high scores on our patient satisfaction surveys. The goals of this presentation are to alleviate your anxiety, to understand the preoperative, surgical, and postoperative process, and for you to prepare for your surgery. We want to identify and clarify the steps that are needed, and also identify any equipment you might need prior to surgery. You should have received a pre-admission folder from your surgeon's office. Please bring this folder with you to all your appointments. It includes important information regarding your surgery, including pre-surgical instructions, pre-surgical education, and information on pain control. The preoperative process can be overwhelming. We are here to help you. At least four weeks prior to your surgery, the orthopedic navigator will call to schedule your pre-admission testing appointment and an orthopedic physician assistant appointment. The pre-admission testing and ortho PA appointment will be scheduled on the same day, whenever possible, and will occur as close to 30 days before surgery as possible. The appointment will last about an hour and a half to two hours. During this appointment, you will have blood work performed. If you are not going to a cardiologist, you will need to get an EKG at this time. If there are any issues with your testing, the orthopedic PA will contact you directly. We have an orthopedic PA who follows your medical condition from the time of pre-admission testing to the time you are discharged. Prior to your pre-admission testing appointment, you will speak to a pre-admission nurse over the phone. She will review your medical and surgical history, as well as your current medications, including over-the-counter vitamins and supplements. She will also review any preoperative instructions you will need to follow prior to your surgery as well as obtain contact information of your primary care physician, specialist, and pharmacy. Once your pre-admission testing appointment is scheduled, you can schedule your PCP, cardiology, and dental clearances. These clearances need to be completed after you have your blood work done at your pre-admission testing. Not everyone needs to receive these clearances. Your surgeon will tell you if you need to see one. We know that this is a tight time frame, but it is important to have blood work done and your clearances close to your surgery. Your surgeon may order physical therapy for you prior to surgery. The navigator will help coordinate the appointment if you are having your therapy at Doylestown. As stated previously, you will be meeting with the PA prior to your surgery. The PA follows your medical care from the time of pre-admission testing until after your surgery. She will review all the pre-admission testing information clearances as they become available. She will call you if there are any issues. During your visit, she will review your medical history and perform a physical. She will review your medication list and your post-operative plan of care. She will provide you with a prescription for mupirocin, the medicine you will use prior to your surgery. After your surgery, when you go to the orthopedic floor, she will be there to assist you with your post-operative medical management. Based on your past medical history, you may be instructed to speak with anesthesiology prior to the day of your surgery. This option is available to any patient upon request. If you have a specific question, let the orthopedic navigator know and she will assist you with arranging for anesthesiology to contact you. 
The following slides will talk about what you need to do to prepare for surgery. If you're going home the same day of surgery, you will need to identify a coach. This is someone who will be with you at the time of your surgery and stay with you for several days. If you're staying overnight, we request that you make arrangements for someone to be with you for a few days after you go home. If you have no one to go home to or no one to stay with you, please let the navigator know. We will be talking about equipment and the need to purchase the necessary equipment and supplies that you may need at home. You should pack clothes and toiletries for the hospital. If you're told to stop certain medications prior to your surgery, please follow the instructions that you were provided. Now I will discuss the equipment you may need after surgery. The first one is a brace. This brace will be provided to you during your operation. You do not need to worry about getting this beforehand. The brace should be worn at all times, with the exception of performing exercises and showering after your surgery. Your surgeon will tell you how long you must wear this brace. Depending on the height of your toilet, you may need to purchase toilet equipment before your surgery. To determine if this equipment is needed, attempt standing from the toilet without the use of your surgical arm. If you are struggling or unable to stand, we recommend either a 3-in-1 commode, which is pictured on the left, or a raised toilet seat with rails, which is pictured on the right. Either of these pieces of equipment will raise your toilet height, allowing you to stand more easily. Insurance usually does not cover these items. Depending on your shower or tub setup, you may need to think about the following items. Will you need a tub seat? This could be purchased with or without a back. Do you have grab bars? Do you have a handheld shower head that can help you during your recovery? Again, insurances usually do not pay for these type of devices. If you are concerned about installing grab bars, there are temporary suction cup grab bars that you can purchase online or in the store. You should make sure they work prior to your surgery because they do not always stick on all surfaces. There are a few things you will need to do prior to your surgery. Three days prior to your surgery, including the morning of your surgery, you will be instructed to shower using your special soap HippoCleanse. There is a handout in your folder to describe this process. The first night after using HippoCleanse, use clean sheets and wear clean clothes to bed. We also ask that you have no pets in your bed for three days prior to your surgery. You will be given a prescription for mupirocin ointment when you see the ortho PA. This is to be placed in your nose in the morning and evening for three days prior to surgery and in the morning before you come to the hospital. You will also receive this mupirocin ointment the evening of your surgery as well as the morning and evening of the day after your surgery. This is to help prevent infections. Please see the handout for this process. You will not need to bring the mupirocin ointment to the hospital. Just to review, mupirocin is used for a total of five days, three days before, day of surgery, and the day after. On the day before surgery, the hospital will contact you after 3 p.m. to tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. If your surgery is on a Monday, you will receive a call on Friday. You are not to eat anything eight hours prior to your arrival time. You are able to drink eight ounces of clear liquids up to two hours prior to your arrival time. You may be thinking, what is a clear liquid? A clear liquid is anything that you can see through. Examples are water, apple juice, and light colored sports drinks. Black coffee and tea are also acceptable, but you cannot add cream. By not adhering to these guidelines, we may have to cancel your surgery. So please remember, clear liquids up to two hours prior to your scheduled arrival time at the hospital. A few reminders for the day of surgery. Do not eat anything eight hours prior to your arrival time. Again, only eight ounces of clear liquids up to two hours prior to your arrival. You should shower in the morning using special soap HippoCleanse. You should use your nose medicine, mupirocin, prior to coming to the hospital. You will report to the same day surgery area on the second floor of the main building of the hospital. Please check in at the volunteer desk. Only one person is permitted in the prep area with you. Additional guests may remain in the atrium waiting area. 
a volunteer will escort you to the same day surgery area. Once you are escorted back, the nursing staff will begin to prep you for your surgery. You will receive an IV through which you will receive fluids, pain medications, and antibiotics. You will have the IV site in during your whole hospital stay. If there is no IV running, the IV access will still be in your arm. The nursing staff will begin to cleanse your arm with wipes that are specially treated to help prevent infection. If you have hair in the area, they will clip if necessary. You may be fitted for TED hose, which are compression stockings. Your arm will be initialed to ensure surgery is performed on the correct shoulder. You will use the restroom prior to going to surgery. You will meet with the anesthesiologist prior to your surgery. You may receive a scalene block to help with the pain. Also, please bring a list of any medications that you are currently taking. We realize that you gave the nurses information previously. However, at times medications do change. Also, if you are instructed to bring any medications with you, please do so. When it is time for your surgery, you will need to say goodbye to your family members. You will leave the same day surgery area and go to the operating room. You may go to the holding area first. Prior to your surgery, you will be given antibiotics. Your vital signs will be monitored, including blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen levels. Your surgery will take approximately one to two hours. Your physician works with the vendor prior to your scheduled surgery to ensure that your new shoulder will be a correct fit. The hospital team prepares the new joint prior to surgery so it is ready for you. An incision is made on the front of your shoulder. The length will vary based on your body type. The length will be as long as needed to access the joint. I know that your surgeon has already reviewed what happens during surgery, but I would like to review it again here. The damaged or degenerative parts are removed and replaced with new artificial parts. In order to understand what is replaced, we are going to now look at what a normal shoulder looks like. Your shoulder is a ball and socket joint. The head of your humerus, the upper arm bone, is the ball and the glenoid of the scapula, shoulder blade, is your socket. In a traditional shoulder replacement, the ball of the upper arm, or humerus, and the socket, the glenoid, are replaced. In a reverse total shoulder, a metal ball is attached to the socket side, which is the glenoid, and a plastic socket is attached to the upper arm bone where the ball, the humeral head, used to be. During the surgery, the parts are tested by moving your shoulder in multiple directions to ensure a proper fit. X-rays are taken to ensure that it is in the proper position and in alignment with your other arm. The incision is stitched with dissolvable stitches on the inside and your incision will be closed with glue. Your surgeon may use staples. A protective waterproof dressing will be placed over your incision. Once your surgery is completed, you will be transferred from the OR table to your hospital bed and have foot pumps placed on your feet and ice will be placed on your surgical shoulder. You will then be taken to the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU. You will have your sling on and it is to stay on at all times except for showering and exercises. Your pain will be assessed and medications provided through your IV. The nurses there will make sure you are comfortable and safely come out of anesthesia. You will continue to be on monitors. Your time in the PACU will depend on how you are recovering. Family members are not permitted in this area. Once you are ready to leave the PACU, if you are a same-day surgery patient, you will return to the same-day surgery area until it is time for you to go home. If you are staying overnight, you will be transported to the orthopedic unit in your hospital bed. You will be greeted on the floor by a nurse who will do an assessment. The nursing staff will take your vitals frequently and monitor your pain levels. They will also give you your medications. Once you are admitted, you will begin to take your pain medications by mouth once you begin to eat. Staff will assist you with ordering your meals. All meals are ordered through our At Your Request program. The meals are made to order and delivered within an hour of ordering. Because you just had surgery, you will not be permitted to get up by yourself. 
you must ring your call bell for help. This is for your safety. Occupational therapy will begin the day of surgery. If you do stay the night, you will have foot pumps on your feet while in bed in order to prevent blood clots. Please make sure you do not get out of bed by yourself as these foot pumps are attached to the bed and will cause you to fall. Ice packs are available to help you with your shoulder pain and can be changed multiple times throughout the day. Depending on your past medical history, you may have other physicians come and see you while you're in the hospital. The most common specialists are hospitalists or cardiologists. You will see occupational therapy or OT during your stay here at the hospital. They will go over your home exercise program with you. They will also teach you how to get dressed and use your arm in a sling. They will review with you what we call activities of daily living, bathing, toilet hygiene, meal preparation. Two items that may be beneficial to purchase prior to surgery is a pizza cutter to assist with one-handed cutting and shelf liner for non-slip surfaces. Here at Doylestown Hospital, we use a multimodal pain management approach. The plan starts prior to surgery, continues during your stay, and upon discharge. This includes the use of narcotic and non-narcotic pain medication and ice to reduce swelling. You'll be given medications based on your level of pain, which will be explained to you by the nursing staff. You will need to ask for your pain medication. You are having an orthopedic surgical procedure and you will experience pain postoperatively. Our goal is for your pain to be managed appropriately, to allow you to be as comfortable as possible, and able to participate in therapy. We we'll use a pain scale of 0 to 10 to rate your pain. See the sheet in your folder which explains the pain scale. You will be asked your pain level several times during the day. Pain medications work different ways and different people respond differently to medications. If your pain is not tolerable, you will need to let the nurse know. This form reviews the common medications that are given on the orthopedic unit and lists several side effects for pain medications. Pain medications can cause constipation. You will be prescribed a stool softener while in the hospital and you should continue with this medication at home. If you go longer than three days without a bowel movement, you will need to let your surgeon know immediately. If you are experiencing any other side effects, you should let your surgeon know. In order to prevent blood clots following your surgery, most patients will be instructed to take aspirin for four weeks. If you are already or on Coumadin, your blood work will be monitored postoperatively. Unless otherwise notified, your surgeon will be responsible for monitoring your Coumadin levels when you go home. If you are on a special medicine, such as Pradaxa or Eliquis, you will be placed on Coumadin postoperatively and then be transitioned to your preoperative medicine when it is safe to do so you will be given special instructions upon discharge. As stated previously, discharge planning starts prior to surgery. The goal is for our patients to go home directly from the hospital. Research shows that the best way to recover is in your own home. However, this is not always possible and each patient is assessed to ensure that home is the safest option. Upon discharge, your prescriptions will be sent electronically to your pharmacy of choice. For your convenience, ShopRite Pharmacy is located on the first floor of the hospital, making it easy for a family member to pick up for you when you are ready to be discharged. When you go home, it is important to take your medications as prescribed. If you have any issues or your pain is not controlled, you should call the surgeon's office. Your shoulder will have a protective waterproof dressing which will be removed approximately seven days after surgery. If you have staples, you will be given instructions on when they will be removed. Please use good hand hygiene at all times in order to prevent infection. You should call your surgeon if your wound is draining, have a fever, or if you have redness in the area. As stated previously, you will be in a sling for several weeks. You are only allowed to come out of the sling for bathing and for exercise. There will also be certain motions that you may or may not be able to do. The surgeon or therapist will review these with you following surgery. You will have a follow-up appointment with your surgeon two to four weeks post-op depending on your type of surgery. 
The appointment date and time will be on the discharge instructions. If you do not have a follow-up appointment already scheduled, please call your surgeon's office to schedule it. At this visit, you will know if you're able to drive and when you should start physical therapy. Unless your insurance dictates that you use a specific provider, you have the ability to choose where you would like to go for therapy. We recommend that you use Doylestown Hospital Outpatient Therapy. Our staff has extensive training in your surgeon's protocols and work closely with the surgeons to ensure that you are on a path to a speedy recovery. At times, the plan that you had in place may change depending on how you are doing. The orthopedic navigator will assist you with discharge planning and any needs you may have when you leave the hospital. A few weeks after surgery, you may receive a survey in the mail. Please complete the survey as we value your input and use responses to maintain and improve our services. If you have any issues, please do not hesitate to let us know. We usually receive some frequently asked questions, so I thought I may address some of those here. It may be up to four hours from the time you arrive at the hospital to the time you get to your room on the orthopedic floor. Your family is welcome to wait in the family waiting area and they will be provided with updates about how you are doing. Your surgeon will talk with them after your surgery is complete. For same day surgery patients, your coach will be present for discharge instructions. Your surgeon will tell you how long to wear your sling. Below is a list of things to bring to the hospital. Comfortable, loose-fitting clothes, supportive shoes with non-slip soles, shoes without ties are easier. Also, if you would like to get elastic ties on your shoes, it is sometimes helpful for patients. Bring an updated list of all your prescriptions and over-the-counter medicines, a cell phone charger, and any personal items such as cosmetics and toiletries. Please do not bring valuables to the hospital. Your therapist will provide a home exercise program specifically for you. Please review the following video about activities of daily living. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm an occupational therapist here at Doylestown. I'm going to show you today um, a few things about putting on a shirt and um, taking your sling on and off after your total shoulder replacement. Your sling will look similar to this one. Um, there are different variations, so um, the process of it is about the same. Um, I'm going to simulate that my right arm is the one that I had surgery on. To take this, to put the sling on, you're going to open it, put your arm down into the sling, making sure the elbow is all the way back. Take the strap, bring it around your shoulder, your neck. and then clip it into place. To take the sling off, you're going to do exactly the opposite. So you're going to unclip it here, bring it around, straighten your elbow out, and take the sling off. To put on a button-up shirt, you're going to take the shirt, dressing your surgical arm first. You can lean forward a little bit just to make sure that the arm is away from your body. Take the sleeve, put your surgical arm in, bring the shirt up over your shoulder. You're going to use your other arm to bring the other sleeve on around. Put that arm through. You can then bend your elbow to button the, to button the shirt up. To take it off, you're going to do exactly the opposite. So you're going to take it out of the left arm first, non-surgical arm. And if necessary, you can lean forward again and take it off of the surgical arm. To do a pullover shirt, you'll take the shirt, here again you may lean forward a little bit to get the arm away from the body, put the shirt through the surgical arm up above the elbow. Then take the non-surgical arm, pull it so that it's up above the elbow. Grab the shirt at the neck and pull it over your head. 
You'll then use your both hands, if necessary, to pull the shirt down. To take the shirt off, you'll want to bring the shirt itself up a little bit. Lean forward. Grab the shirt by the back of the neck. And pull off. One other thing that you may find difficulty with after surgery is in the kitchen. Um, a lot of people w will still need to cut items and things. Um, so one suggestion that we have is using a pizza cutter to use one-handed for cutting. Um, if things are slipping around on the kitchen countertop, you can always use like shelf liner or a non-slip surface um, to put things under so that it doesn't slip around on you. Um, I hope you find that this information was helpful. Good luck. After you have finished this presentation, please select your surgery and or doctor in the list below to view additional exercise video. These exercises are typical exercises that you will do after your surgery. On behalf of everyone here at the Orthopedic Institute at Doylestown Hospital, we want to thank you for not only choosing us to care for you, but also thank you for viewing this presentation. Please click the button at the bottom of this web page to verify that you have received this education. Also, if you have any questions, please reach out to the Orthopedic Navigator. We will see you soon and good luck with your upcoming surgery.